French buck was very fond of playing tricks. He never did any harm, but he sometimes made people feel very foolish. One day, he overheard two people talking. It is our wedding day by a week from tomorrow, said Jean. It's a market day today. We must go into town and buy all things we need to set up house. There will be a lot to carry, said Julius. We must take the horse and cart. French Park chuckled to himself and sat on a fence and teased some chickens to while away the time while he waited for their return. With so many things to buy, they were sure to forget something. It was late afternoon before Jean and Julius returned. The cart was so loaded, there was barely room for them on it. French buck leapt through the air, light as a goose feather, and sat on a chair leg behind them. Having knives, Jean was asking, Yes, have it so? Yes, then we have everything we need, said Jean with a happy sigh. And she snuggled up to Jules and began to dream about their wedding day. The horse was trotting. The birds were singing, Jules was whistling, Jean was dreaming, and the French buck was waiting. He did not have long to wait. Suddenly, Jean sat up with such a start. Jules jerked on the horse's reins and began, and between them, they almost upset the cart. Oh no, wailed Jean. A gleeful grin spread across French Buck's face. He rubbed his hands together in anticipation and his pointed ears twitched. Ho ho, he thought to himself. She's remembered something she has forgotten. Look, look! What now? grumbled Jules, who had quite enough to do trying to persuade the horse to take the right direction. Hey, be careful, he cried as Jean jumped from the cart. Look, a ball of thread. And what a ball of thread it was. It had all the colors in it that she needed. Pink, yellow, apricot, sky blue and delicate green. Oh, what a lucky thing I saw it, cried Jean. But how did it get there, asked Julius. This isn't the time to be asking silly questions, said Jean, climbing back onto the cart. Julius turned the cart homewards again and they continued on their way with Jean carrying the precious ball of thread on her lap and with French Buck doing somersaults on the chair leg behind them. The dressmaker was very pleased when she saw the thread. It's absolutely perfect, she said. She was even more pleased with it as she sewed the wedding clothes. It was as smooth as silk. It didn't break, it didn't knot, and each color was exactly the right length. The wedding day came and everyone, and that included French Buck, gathered outside the church to see the new bride. How pretty she looked! What a beautiful dress! Everybody exclaimed. And then it happened. Crick, crack. The tiny colored bows decorating the skirt began to float to the ground. Oh! gasped Jean. What is happening? gasped everyone else. Quick crack! The muslin flowers decorating the bodice fell into a shower of petals. Quick crack! The frill round the bottom of the skirt fell to the ground. Then the skirt itself tumbled round Jean's ankles. The sleeves came apart 
and fell from her arms. The bodies fell into five different pieces. Poor Jean was left standing in her petticoat with her wedding dress in tatters around her. Someone ran from the crowd and put a cloak round her shoulders and Jules took her home so that she could put on another dress. The thread I sewed with must have been rotten, said the dressmaker who was blushing as scarlet as Jean herself. Oh, the shame of it all! When everyone else had gone, she gathered the pieces. She looked at them very carefully. She turned each piece over and over. She couldn't find one tiny piece of sewing thread anywhere. It had all disappeared. I should have known such perfect thread was too good to be true, she sighed. The mystery was never explained, but then nobody had seen French Puck, had they?